Okay, so welcome everybody to the um, Ski Sparks uh, Level One Ski for Fun uh, presentation. Um, a couple of years ago, I'm sure most of you are probably new to our program, but having Level One be um, uh, only for four and five year olds is a, a, a somewhat new concept. We just started it last year. Um, and because of that, um, uh, we were able to developmentally um, kind of cater this level, not just uh, for ski development, but for kind of psychological uh, needs as well for that age group, because we're really kind of talking um, pre first grade um, for this age group. So thank you for being part of our community. The mission of the Minnesota Youth Ski League is to empower youth to be joyful, confident winter enthusiasts by building inclusive communities that reduce barriers to cross country skiing. We do this through a club structure of volunteers and parents and clubs are 100% volunteer led and coached. And we can't do it without you. And more importantly, it, you are um, actually part of who we're trying to serve. So if a parent becomes uh, more involved and more educated about their, uh, the sport, um, the child is much more likely to become a lifelong skier. So our Ski Sparks club structure and program design, um, we have six skill levels overall, level one through four are classic and level five and six are skate. Um, we allow beginners to enter depending on their age at level one, two, or three. We do not allow, uh, even if they're older kids, um, anybody uh, as a beginner skier into the skate levels. I just mentioned that because that can be a little bit confusing to adults that only skate, but developmentally, we want kids to um, learn to classic and have the one-legged glide and the rhythm um, and some techniques for going up and down hills before they move to skating. So our programs are based on the concepts of the long-term development model, which is a Canadian government model that all of their government funded, uh, funded sports are modeled after. There's a lot of great information online if you, um, you're a nerd for that sort of thing and, and want to take a look, but it's really a, a fantastic body of research. And our Ski Sparks program falls into what's called the fundamental stage of development, which is instilling joy and um, uh, actually uh, snow sports is uh, called out specifically as uh, a skill that children should be exposed to early. Um, and our clubs are, uh, the structure involves parents and caregivers, as I just mentioned, to create community and support the skiers. So equipment for level one, skis that should never be taller than the skier in level one. So anywhere, you know, um, from shoulder to eyebrows is probably a good height um, for a level one skier, um, the kinds of, uh, those little kind of skis that you strap onto your snow boots, those are fine, especially for four-year-olds, or I would say, um, a first year level one skier. Once they have a year under their belt, it would be great if they, if you could acquire, um, real skis and boots, um, for your skier. We do not use poles, um, in level one at all. So you do not need to purchase poles. We don't want the kids using poles. It actually hinders the um, what we're trying to teach them. Um, I'll talk about this a little later, but we're all better off if we ski uh, without poles. A lot of the time it teaches a lot of um, important technique and balance. Um, as you see in this picture, uh, four and five year olds will not be able to put the skis on by themselves. So be prepared to get down on the ground and help them with their skis. And you can certainly try this out at home, you know, on some carpet in your living room, uh, let the skier walk around. Also, you know, it's a good chance for you to get familiar with how um, the boot and binding work. Um, and it, it becomes a little bit more complicated when you're out in the snow and snow and ice gets um, uh, stuck to the bottom of the boot. Clothing. So you wanna dress your skier just like they're going sledding. 
um, and I think most of you know what that means um, since you're living in Minnesota. Um, this uh, young skier here is wearing a muff over her face and that's a super versatile option. Um, we haven't lived with these for very long. We used to do other crazy things, but these are really fantastic and can be used in a different way. But most importantly, they cover your ears and your neck, um, which makes a huge difference in staying warm. And then the other big thing with dressing is the saying goes that cotton is rotten, but specifically cotton socks, because if you sweat it all, um, that moisture then freezes outside in the cold and you will get chilled very quickly. Um, so cotton socks are a big no-no. Ideally, you're going for some um, uh, mostly wool sock or it's a synthetic blend, but please uh, no cotton socks. And I will say um, in most cases, it, unless it's quite warm, a child should always have hats and mittens or gloves, big gloves. Winning at winter. So kids this young, a typical outing uh, should be pretty short. 45 minutes to 60 minutes is, is plenty. Though you know your, your child, um, obviously, so you know um, what your child can put up uh, with for attention span and outdoor activity. I, I will say though, that you're better off leaving before the breakdown happens. So just keep that in mind. You will always want to have snacks or food with you or in your pocket. Um, this is a high calorie burning activity being outside in the cold and using your whole body. Um, and a snack can also, um, save you if you're 10 minutes away from the chalet. Um, and what we're doing in this, uh, but parents can support this as well in level one is encouraging any sort of movement on skis. So there's no right or wrong to what a child does on their skis, especially in level one. And your backyard is just fine for practice. And by practice, we mean you know, walking around, going in circles, um, you know, making letters in the snow. It absolutely does not have to look like skiing. And a small bump that your skier can play on. So I'm not talking about a hill. I'm talking about if you take a, a, a snow shovel and shovel four, four scoops of snow in a pile, um, that is an awesome spot for your child to play and figure out how to get up and down um, just a little mound of snow in your yard. So an overview of level one, we actually refreshed the curriculum a little bit this year. And the, the theme for level, level one is fun in the snow. So you note that it's barely, it doesn't even have a, a ski focus necessarily. It's more about fun while you have skis on. So the two main goals are being comfortable falling down and getting up, and then any sort of movement with the skis on. So falling down, first of all, it's, it's part of skiing, and it can be a fun part of skiing, though as adults, you probably don't think that way. So please don't project that fear of falling onto your skier. The, ski, uh, the falling um, really needs to be um, something that is uh, accepted as normal in skiing. We all, we all do it. And you can first practice just by sitting down and then you can have a little more momentum and fall. Um, but once the kids fall a few times and uh, they get up, they realize that they're not gonna hurt themselves and it can be a lot of fun. Now we teach a very specific way to get up and I just, I'm not gonna click on this link here cause I'm not sure how the video will show through on the Zoom, but I just pinned this to the top of the MYSL Facebook page. Um, and the big pointer here is we want the kids to roll on their back and then put their skis up in the air to untangle them. And we kind of, we call that dead bug. And then you roll both feet to one side and you bring your hands towards your tips to get up. So what you wanna avoid is your hands being behind you and trying to get up um, like that because what happens is you just scoot along and you don't, it's very difficult to get up that way. So we want the kids to bring 
uh, hands forward to get up. And that's true again for adults as well. And um, also uh, just a tip for adults, you don't wanna use your poles to get up because you can actually break your pole with that sort of um, strange pressure in those positions. So you wanna try to get up mostly without the poles. So then um, the second uh, big goal for level one is movement on skis. So you can see in this picture, it doesn't really look like skiing, but they're really working on um, important skills here of balance and knowing where the skis are, um, moving from leg to leg, um, all super important as fundamental motions. And then a lot of our curriculum is um, based on activities and games. So level one skiers need simple games, so not complicated group games with rules. Um, and they learn uh, by following your example. So you can, kind of, you can use almost any game that they do in school, like follow the leader, Simon says, hokey pokey, except here we're gonna do it with skis on. And another pointer about, uh, especially for this level, is um, we use almost no technical ski jargon. So we want to substitute other fun words, not just because they're fun, but we don't want to have to explain what parallel means to a four-year-old. So we use words like make your skis look like a railroad track or you know, piece, piece of pizza, make your skis look like a piece of pizza. And in this picture, um, I don't exactly know that uh, why it's called this, but when we work on sidestepping, um, it's uh, we also often do a chant that's banana gorilla, banana gorilla, and that gives the kids an idea of how to use one foot at a time and um, use rhythm. And here in this picture, you see that the skiers have one ski on and one ski off, and that is called a scooter. And that's really the bread and butter of most of the Ski Sparks activities and games because it teaches uh, two of the most important fundamentals of classic technique, which is kicking and how the kick should feel, which is straight down into the snow and the full weight transfer to the gliding ski. Um, and it's, you don't have to say anything to a kid when they're doing a scooter drill they, um, about what they're learning. You just need um, to give them time and it naturally develops that kick and glide feeling on the snow. And it also uh, fairly quickly builds confidence because a kid might struggle with slipping with both skis on or they're not quite sure what to do, but they'll have a lot more confidence uh, in the scootering. And also the scooter uh, um, is extremely versatile because you can do games, you can do relays, you can hold hands and do partner scooters, you can do them uphill, you can do them downhill. So it's, uh, don't just think it's one thing that you can do for two minutes. You, you can wrap up a scooter drill into, you know, 10 different things that you're doing in a day. And then how to support your skier. So we do require that uh, level one parents stay uh, quite nearby. Um, they do not have to be on skis. Um, and if they are on skis, you should leave your poles behind and not have poles because they'll just get in the way as you assist. Because it's perfectly okay to hold the skier's hand. Um, like you see in this picture, um, it depends uh, on what your child is comfortable with. Um, but then also you can participate in the games and have fun as well. So um, you can do the exact same thing on or off skis that the kids are doing. So if it's hokey pokey or Simon says, you get the idea. So we're encouraging play on skis. And again, in your yard or in a local park, I mean, what I'm trying to say is like a playground. You don't have to drive your four-year-old across town to find groom ski trails. All you're looking for is a little bit of non-icy snow, um, which can very often be found, uh, for example, on the shady side of a, of a hill. Um, but just allow the 
child to play or even go to a playground and they can spend time on the playground and also a little bit of time on their skis. Just get them out um, another day or two a week and the development will really take off. Um, and again, here, I guess I'm saying that um, if you are on skis to accompany your level one skier, which is again, not required, uh, you're, you would be better off not bringing your poles. And then to go over again, the caregiver requirements, um, all level one skiers must have a caregiver on the snow with them. Um, they, the parent or the caregiver can be, um, coaching or helping another level. But again, be aware that level one skiers um, will probably be done um, at about an hour and the other levels in our Ski Sparks Club go for about 90 minutes. Um, so you'll want a parent to be able to attend to your level one skier after about an hour. Um, we do need all uh, parents and caregivers, even if they're on, uh, on foot, to register as a level one, uh, at least a sweeper. And so, so we know who is there and around the children. Um, a sweeper, the definition of sweeper is just somebody that kind of brings up the rear and kind of helps if a child needs assistance or loses a hat or you know that sort of thing. Um, I realize that might not be a familiar term. We do, however, still need coaches and assistant coaches to actually lead the activities. And we really encourage parents that have, you know, relatively uh, uh, independent children to take on the role of coach or assistant coach. And again, you need very little ski knowledge. It's mostly just enthusiasm and a willingness to um, lead the games. Um, and just a few more uh, notes here about uh, registering as a volunteer that level one duty of attending to your skier can be shared amongst caregivers. So for example, uh, the dad can come for uh, one week and the mom can come the next week, but everyone has to register. Um, and if more than one adult skis in a family, we would really appreciate the other person signing up to coach another level. We're always looking for other coaches, um, for more coaches for other levels and anybody that has skis is really qualified to coach, especially um, through level three. You don't need any specific ski knowledge. It's just about following our, um, our day by day curriculum and having a, a passion and enthusiasm uh, for teaching kids. A couple of preemptive questions is um, that I've gotten is doesn't a child need instruction? And at this age, uh, or should we be looking out for bad habits? And the answer to that is, you know, at this age, if a skier has um, equipment that fits them well and they're comfortable, meaning that they're warm and dry and they have safe snow, which is just a couple inches of snow that's not too icy, they will learn appropriately with guided games. So you don't ever have to give verbal instruction on what you're seeing that skier do. And the second question is, don't skiers need to learn stopping techniques? At this age, um, center of gravity is very low, momentum is very low, and stopping techniques are not needed. The natural stopping response is to sit down, um, which is appropriate for a young child. Um, but please, like for example, if uh, the skier is playing at a park or in your yard, um, Make sure that if there's if there's an incline, that the area is free of obstacles. And that's it. So and we will see you on the snow. So this is actually a picture of um, our Elm Creek level one skiers. So um, we'll just explain what's going on here. We have the level one skiers in a group, no poles. We have the level one coach in the center. We have a bunch of parents, um, mostly uh, on foot, kind of lingering uh, and attending in the background. That's a great example, a great picture of what to expect for level one. Also, I will point out, you can see on the right, very close to the parking lot in the chalet. So level one skiers don't get very far 
uh, from where they start. So they stay pretty close uh, to where they start from. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing uh, my screen. And now I'm just gonna open it up for question and answer. So people can either unmute and ask questions or you can type them into the chat. Um, I have one question. When um, can we expect the rental skis to be available? Which club are you in? Hiawatha. So Hiawatha has had one of their main pickup days already, and they're probably planning a second one. Um, okay. so please double check with your club leader to make sure you're on the list and who might be getting the, the emails in your family. Okay. Um, I have a question, some questions in the chat coming through. How do we know when to pick up ski packages for our group? Um, Lebanon Hills just picked up their equipment from the warehouse today. So I would assume um, if you haven't heard, um, uh, well, here's, a, I'll, I'll answer that in general. If you have a club that you know has club rentals and you have not heard about when the pickup is, please contact your club leader. And if you don't know the email for your club leader, you can find that uh, every club has a page. So if you go to the MYSL website and click find a club, that's where you can find the information, the email for your club leader, and they will tell you the plan um, for picking up club equipment and any other question that you might have. Um, if you're not sure about the first day or the time, that's where that information is. So again, go to find a club on our webpage and then find the name of your club and that's where you find that information. Um, at Battle Creek, there is no natural snow. If there, um, if there is no snow, do we still meet? That's actually a very good question and I should make a slide about that. Um, so it is up to individual clubs to decide what they do um, in either inclement weather, meaning it's very cold, or if there's no snow. So some clubs will still meet if there's no snow and do other activities, especially if it's the first, the first meeting. Um, some clubs will go to a man-made backup location and you will have to, the leader would uh, uh, warn you of that pending decision um, uh, two or three days ahead of time. Um, but the thing to keep in mind there is, um, and I actually didn't talk about this in the talk, but you, you also need to be aware of uh, if you're going to be on skis, there's a chance that you will need a trail pass. And if you go to a backup site, the trail pass situation might be uh, different than at your home site. So the answer to the natural snow question is it depends on the club. A lot of clubs use uh, a man-made backup, uh, but not all of them. If the weather is um, very cold, um, some, some clubs will meet and some clubs won't. It depends uh, a lot on the wind direction and what your facility is like, meaning how quickly can you get into the woods to get out of the wind. So we leave those decisions um, up to the club. A question, if we filled out a volunteer form, when will we find out what role we are assigned? I'm in Northfield. That's a very good question for your club leader. So I would email your club leader and ask about that if you're not sure. Is there a ski rental program for DXC Ski Sparks? Um, not this year, but I know that there are daily rentals at the Ski Chalet um, for DXC. And that's true of a lot of our clubs as well. So sometimes the club has rentals, sometimes the facility has rentals, and actually sometimes we do some of both. Um, uh, again, I will be recording um, and posting all of these presentations and the slides uh, in a couple of days. Uh, question, we got skis for our five-year-old at Ski Hut and um, they fit her. The skis are about two inches taller than her. Um, that's probably okay, but she will be in those skis you know, for years to come. So in general, um, 
we want a child to grow out of the skis, not into them. Uh, so if you have uh, an option between a pair of skis that's too short and too long, you want to go with the too short skis. In this case, it looks like the skier has been out trying them out and she's doing great. So stick, stick with them, but she could actually um, stay in those skis for at least one more, if not two more winters. So that's actually, you got a pretty good deal out of that. Uh, question, my husband and I only have skate skis. Um, we have a level one and level two skier. Would, would it be better for us to be without skis rather than skating with kids learning classic? Um, you can actually fake it pretty well especially in level one and two on skate skis. So you can make it look like you're uh, doing the classic skiing motion on your skate skis. That ceases to work, you know, once the kid gets into level three and four, but for level one and two, um, you can pretend pretty well on your skate skis. Um, I'm a coach, but I, own, uh, same question, I only have skate skis, is it okay? Yes. Uh, Yes, it is okay to be on skate skis for level one, but um, I would also, again, just play that by ear um, and you might find it easier not to be on skis at all. Um, but again, you can pretend to classic um, on your skate gear. Um, okay, I think that's all the questions in the chat. Um, I, have, I have a question, Amy. Yep. Um, real quick, so my husband and I, neither of us actually have skis. We have a level one skier, um, and I know we're supposed to register as a coach, assistant coach, or sweeper, which is fine. We're happy to register as a sweeper. However, I just am concerned that we, we register as a sweeper as a volunteer, but we don't have skis, but that's one of the requirements to be a sweeper. I don't want to show up and they expect that we're going to have ski. Like, I guess I don't know how to yeah. navigate that, maybe. Um, the, the leaders know to look out for that. So if somebody registers as a level one sweeper, they know that um, they're likely just a parent attend attendant. Thank you. Yeah, we'll try to clarify that next year. It was kind of rushed through as part of our COVID policy last year, which is, and we didn't fix it this year. Um, uh, but I think you get the idea. Uh, question again. Once again, can you remind me how to find out the club leader? So if you go to mysl.org, there's a, a button for find a club, and that will give you the index of all the clubs. And then from there, you click on the name of your club, and it will have lots of information, the dates, the meeting times, the address of the location, whether the chalet has rentals, the name of the leader, you get the idea. Um, okay. I think that's it, everybody. I'm gonna stop recording.